Day just a couple days ago here on the 21st to uh, to go through the DSpace Entities Overview Discussion Document that I'm sure you've all reviewed um, if you're here in this meeting, um, and specifically kind of look a little bit more closely at the new um, option number three that um, that Atmeyer uh, proposed as an alternative to the other two that were already there. Um, and Levin gave a nice presentation to steering in terms of um, going through uh, what their proposal is in a little bit more detail and kind of walking through how this might work. Um, and it was suggested that we'd also try and do that same sort of thing here with this group so that others could get a sense of, of what this proposal entails um, because there was a lot of, uh, steering saw a lot of promise out of this proposal. Um, there's no approval of any one proposal, but there's a good amount of promise that they asked for us to kind of take a look at this in more detail and and get some more feedback from the community and see um, whether this seems like a, a good route, if there's if there's major concerns, um, if if um, if um, other things have come up or if there's ways to improve upon it. Um, so no decision has been made at this point in time, but we're just wanting to try and dig in a little bit more deeply on this third option to make sure it gets the same analysis that the first two got so that then we can bring the results of this analysis back to uh, the steering group in April and allow them to, to, to get more feedback from the community and, and get closer to a decision, hopefully make a decision at their April meeting um, at the beginning of April. Uh, so that's essentially where we sit right now. Um, I realize that everybody has, or this option number three just was released publicly and just was released to steering as of this week, as of Monday. Um, so it's all kind of uh, a little bit fresh in everyone's mind, including myself, but that's why we wanted to kind of walk through this in more detail uh, with Levin and get a chance with everybody to kind of ask questions, uh, voice concerns, and we can capture those in this overview and discussion document um, and, uh, and bring them back to steering as well and see um, what we think about this proposal. Um, so I think that's it. Uh, is there anything else that anyone wanted to add? I know, Levin, you were in the steering meeting, and, and Paulo, you were there as well. Is there anything else um, we wanted to add? Or I think, Paulo, Paulo were you there? <laughs> <laughs> I know um, Jose, or, um, um, Joao was there um, in the meeting. Yeah. I think, I think you, you, you make a good resume. Uh, I don't know if Levin wants to... I, I sorry. I asked uh, Levin if he could do the uh -huh. same presentation here in this group, and he, he responded that he, he he wanted to do. <laughs> so uh, I, I will. Uh, uh, we we have uh, we will have the the same presentation here. So can I take the lead? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Okay, uh, just to, to, re to review our last meetings and uh, um, we, uh, on our last meeting, uh, we review and discuss entities in this space uh, as the, the data model uh, level. Um, this discuss discussion wasn't finished, so uh, today we are currently, we are going to to, to focus on, on this, we are going to, to continue this discussion. So the, our agenda is uh, our proposal, Atmire's proposal. Uh, Atmire's proposal is based on the Portland Common Data Model. And if we had time to discuss, uh, I, I wish we had time to, to discuss top-down and bottom-up uh, strategies based on what we have uh, speak spoke um, till now. Um, these are our uh, use cases. Uh, these slides, we already seen them. Um, just focus on the main concerns, the data model flexibility and complexity, uh, also the, the, the need to have more uh, advanced metadata, uh, not the, the flat data model, uh, met, met data, metadata model, and uh, um, what should be configurable and what should be uh, provided by default. So, 
Based upon on that and some of the raised questions, we uh, came up with a proposal um, that uh, needs to to have two components. The, the one uh, changes to to the existing model data model structure and some new tables. Uh, those uh, changes. Uh, we consider that they are relevant because they enable the, um, the structure to, to be more flexible. Uh, for example, uh, adding the type field to the, to the, the space object to, to know which type we are uh, dealing with. Uh, convert bundle to bit stream and item to bit, to bit stream. Uh, uh, item to bundle uh, tables to 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 enable to to have the same type of structure but um, not specific for this uh, this space object types and normalize metadata value to support uh, other uh, type of fields. Oh, sorry. Then. Changing this, we uh, need to add a couple of new tables and we are going to show them here. Um, one new table for uh, for each. Um, this this is kind of based on this space crease did with their um, not 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 is isn't uh, only based on that, but is based on what the space crease did to 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 this to uh, their data model. Um, metadata value to support numeric text uh, date values, or uh, can be even uh, extended to to have other types of uh, types of of uh, metadata value types. Um, and one of those types is uh, the entity type, and this enables the, the relationship between um, or, or uh, in in the metadata uh, level. It enables the relation with entities and some core uh, entities like authors, organization that that they have that have a specific. Uh, um behaviors and one generic entity that uh, have a common behavior for uh, entities that uh, instance this, this uh, structure to have entities in this space we think we need as i said uh, the type of uh, that uh, this space object here we, we will have a uh, bit stream which is zero, three. This is something that was abandoned uh, and we think it should exist in, in the space object. Then we, uh, we, we um, change the, the bundle, the, the the bundle to to item and uh, item to bundle to uh, uh, a structure that uh, it is based on not only the item and the bundle or, or bit stream but uh, on the space object this means that um, every entity can uh, relate with each other when I say entity, I mean this space object, sorry. Every this space object can relate with other uh, this space object. We, we can have uh, cardinality uh, or something like that, hierarchical structure. This is uh, the, the example of, of the, the data that can be stored. Um, these are the first class entities that um, can be implemented. One of them is the, the author, for instance. It, it, it extends the, the, uh, the space object 
and uh, can have a specific uh, behavior. One other could be uh, the, the organization, for instance, for example. Um, And where do we do do, do you think do we think that? Uh, um, sorry, I skip one slide. Uh, this is the dynamic uh, entity. Uh, I don't remember the the name that the space Chris gave to this table, but this is the, um, the dy <laughs> dynamic uh, table. It. it uh, it can be, for instance, an event or something like that, and they all share the same behavior. Uh, but uh, we will have events, uh, for instance, uh, location, something like that, and they all need to be specified, and we think that could we could use uh, a specific schema uh, within the site to to um, to store that uh, data. Then the the um, at the metadata uh, value uh, level, we we think that we it could be enhanced. So we proposed uh, uh, here um, normalization and. Um, the introduction of specific type fields, specific metadata uh, types, like text, date, or something like that. And uh, one other important um, type, it's the, the entity type or relation type. It can relate a, a metadata field with an entity and we can expose something like this currently we are this is the the x o i um, format we are, currently have an author uh, which has a, a, a name an authority identifier confidence and we can replace this we could replace replace this with uh, an an enhanced structure like uh, an author with the name and identifiers and something like that so we think that um, the key aspects here this is the solution had some complexity into this space but we think we to introduce uh, entities in this space we, we need to add some kind of complexity um, but we think no more than 10 tables to support and this enables to support a, a much richer and flexible content. Um, metadata can relate uh, entities and uh, we introduce some default entities like authors, organizations and uh, give room to to dynamic entities uh, that share the same behavior but we are currently and this is a proposal it, it was thought and based on the, the space Chris model and other platforms that we know and uh, we aren't currently sure if it can, it can be accomplished with a much easier way so uh, saying this, I think I can handle the, the presentation to to Levin to for him to to show us what he did or thought. Okay. Paulo, do we want to pause real quick here just for maybe five minutes to see if there's any questions or comments specifically on this model? And then we'll hand it over to Levin. For me, okay, but 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 uh, uh, I I was uh, 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 okay. No 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 problem. Yeah, I just want to make sure anybody who has pressing questions has a chance to quickly voice them, um, if there are any. Um, but I want to take no more than five minutes. Is there anybody with questions or comments on this proposal? A thought that just popped into my head. 
was say, oh, why don't we just use this dynamic type for everything? What dynamic type? Uh, dynamic entity type where I don't know. Oh. When you say dynamic, you are saying entities or metadata because we, uh, sh I tried to show the, the, that we are, have different things here. Um, okay. I suppose it's talking regarding because is of authors and organizations that we can already have as a, a created structure uh, instead of having two ticket structures uh, there uh, and then have a, a flexible space object instead of that just having this these dynamic objects and we create dynamic structure of what we need. I think that's the, the point. Yeah, we you know we have several different kinds of entities that are fully defined and then we have this kind for things we didn't think of that's flexible enough, it looks like, to you know to contain all the other types. Yeah, I think that's a, a good point. I don't know if we have an exact answer for that right now. Unless you want to say anything. Hello. Honestly, hello. I like the idea to have some uh, more uh, important entity in the model. It could be the item, the author, the organization, and have some generic entity. This is similar to what exists in this place, Chris. I think that. Uh, this will help to, to keep things simple for some behavior because you have explicitly author organization, you can make some really custom for this entity. So there are few seeds. The, the other thing is uh, you can try to partitioning your data. So to split your information in different table. Of course, you can do that in a several way. You can also think that the database will help you creating partition and uh, table and things like that. But if you leave this stuff to the database, it uh, strongly depends on the, the BMS engine that you go to use. So Postgres has uh, its own solution or a different one. It is much more difficult to, uh, to manage. So honestly, I like the presentation. The proposal from LCAP. I think that the, it is really in line with the, what really the space Chris provide right now. Uh, in some way, I think also that uh, is uh, uh, an evolution of the space Chris in a more uh, uh, natural the space fashion because it is based much more on the metadata and uh, existent concept of the space. Uh, this is something that we uh, was not able to do immediately in the space, Chris, for instance, uh, because this stuff uh, was not yet ready when the space Chris born. So for instance, metadata for all was introduced later, is not present when the space Chris start. And also RCAP have uh, uh, proposed to introduce some of the key change that the space Chris uh, introduced, uh, namely the, uh, the possibility to manage different type of value so that you have reference to other entity, you have date, you have string, you have number. This is not something that you have in, uh, uh, in the basic space model. And uh, also the, the slide where uh, um, you show the ability to expose over IPMH, for instance, complex structure. Uh, this is very nice. It's something that you can do uh, with the space Chris structure. Uh, the only thing here is uh, the difficult part is in the detail. So what I want to be sure is that all of us agree and understood that uh, what we are going to present requires a lot of effort. I don't think that this effort is uh, uh, measured in time of day. It's much more. 
So this is some very nice stuff. Is uh, I think that if we are able to achieve this result in this term with all this capability, it could be also an improvement, an improvement about respect to what we have in this space Chris right now. But this is not something that you can do immediately. It's not a six month project. It's not a one year project. The difficulty is in the detail. When you say that you want to create a different metadata value for different type, you will face with a lot of performance issue, different way to create the structure, to query the database, to make the systematism. This is a lot of effort. Thanks for those comments, Andrea. Uh, yeah, that, you know, that touched another thought that I had that, you know, you know, rather than having 10 different, you know, tables for 10 different kinds of metadata, uh, we should, you know, we know what the type is. We could, you know, serialize it into a, a blob and then we know what to deserialize when we want it back. I don't know whether that would be more or less performant than the other way. Yeah, I'd, I'd encourage us probably not to dig too deeply into implementation. I mean, it's important to get an understanding of these proposals, but I, I, I'm really, really confident of our time here. We yeah. want to make sure we have plenty of time for the other stuff. But it's a good good point, Mark. Um, I don't mean to cut you off. I just don't know that we need to answer every single um, little tiny question on this <laughs> right now. The basic design would be you know, equally good either way. Yep. Are there any other uh, larger questions here? Because if not, I think we should hand this over to Levin so that he can present the third proposal um, and talk through that in the same way. Okay, not hearing anything. So I'm assuming let's hand this over to Levin then and we can talk through this third one as well. I should have pressed unmute before I started sharing my screen. <laughs> okay. Um, so yeah, um, I, I agree with Andrea um, about, especially about the, the concern for time. Um, because this talks about how you do things in, in the back end, um, how you structure the database, but for each new entity we create, we have to create separate um, ways in the in the UI to view them to make sure that they're in the search etc cetera, etc cetera. Um, type metadata is also a good thing to have I'm definitely um, we, we also think that that's a good thing to have but it also adds to the amount of work that needs to go into it and then um, finally to to uh, respond a little bit to Mark's comment um, about why don't we just use that one entity um, object to do things instead of having hard-coded objects that was one of the things that we were asking ourselves as well when 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 we started to come up with a proposal so but of course our proposal is not perfect but one it tries to um, reuse as much of the dspace functionality that currently exists as possible and thus keeping the resources required um, to make a first step in this effort as low as possible and to make sure that we keep room for next steps in next versions of dspace dspace 8 dspace 9 etc cetera, etc cetera, so that we can add um fuller functionality over time so that was a very important um starting point for for creating our proposal so you will see some things that are not in this proposal that are in others such as the hierarchical metadata um, or typed metadata, but that is for the sole reason to, that we want to keep the effort um, doable on the short term and be able to have something in DSpace 7 um, that is usable, um, that can move us forward. So I'm quickly, it's only eight or nine slides. I'm quickly going to talk about entity types and relations, how to configure the data model, um, how to do the storage in the database, what is the impact on Java, how we can reuse current functionality in DSpace. And then at the end, 
um, I'll go into the CRIS models more specifically, and we have some work estimates of how much work this would require. So an, another important first note is that um, this proposal also leaves room or starts from the idea that it is an entities working group and not a CRIS working group. And yes, CRIS is a very important um, uh, reason to have more configurable entities in DSpace, but no, it's not Chris entities. That so this this whole exercise should not be about just Chris objects, but about adding more different types of objects to DSpace. So the first part only talks about that. So entity types and relations, what we try in, in that sense to do is to avoid hard coding a particular object model. So to have a class in there that says author profile is something that we would like to avoid because it is applicable, yes, in the Chris context, but for example, um, and I'll use one of four sciences examples, the DSpace Glam add-on does probably not have an author profile, but it has different kinds of objects. Um, you might think about uh, data repositories where you want a data set that you want to relate to a publication and have a separate page for data sets, not just have it be as a bit stream. And there are several other examples you can think of. So what we want to do is avoid hard coding a particular object model from the start and start from what we have in DSpace. And so that means starting from the item object in DSpace where we would propose that items can have a type and that they can have relations to each other. And so that in any implementation of a data model is configurable. So that also allows us to have other data models um, to be configured in DSpace besides the Chris data model. And it was loosely based on the Portland common data model, just a very quick graph. It's a very simple one where you have a collection an object and a file, and objects can have relations to each other, collections as well. Uh, connections can have, um, can be hierarchical, so they can be um, uh, put in a hierarchical fashion with has member relation. And here you have has member and has related object for object. So this is how you make relations between different entities. So what we would propose is to have the data model itself be configurable. One of the other important reasons to do that is to also not put more burden or complexity in repositories that do not necessarily require more complex object models. Um, we know that there are a lot of people who would like to have Chris entities or other entities into a repository, but we also know that a lot of people like DSpace because it's simple and out of the box. And so by doing this, we can keep it simple and out of the box for some people and make it complex for others. And so this is just an example of how you would define a relationship between a publication and a person. So uh, you have a publication and a person, and then you have um, the labels or types for the relationship as author of publication as publication of author, and then defining the cardinality. So it's a very simple way of configuring the data model. The database storage, the type of entity would be stored in the item table. We would have one new table that is needed to store the relationships between the objects. So you have one row in that table per relationship type from the XML that I showed earlier. So one row for each of these. And so for the Chris model, for example, it only results in a small table of six rows, very low complexity. One more table is needed to store the actual relations between the different item types that exist. Um, and all the other default DSpace database tables will not need to be modified and uh, will not need to be touched because the entity type can be part of the regular item metadata as well. So that means that we also have a very low impact in Java. We just need some classes to retrieve the relationship schema to be able to identify the type of the item that you're looking at and to be able to identify which relations we can create for the current items type. So if you're looking at a particular item type 
which, with which other items can you make relationships and then be able to retrieve all of the current relationships for a particular item that you are looking at. So how does this reuse current functionality? I have a few examples here in the document that's linked at the bottom, that's also linked in Tim's overview. Um, there's a more elaborate coverage of some functionalities in DSpace, but by using the item, we basically have the opportunity to reuse any functionality that currently exists for items. For example, to be able to configure input forms and to build input forms for a specific entity type. Um, you can just reuse the current input forms.xml functionality. Um, you can already search. So let's say we would have this solution, the default discovery DSpace search searches across all entities. And if you have, for example, the entity type as a, a facet, a, a filter facet, in your search, you, you can filter on the different entity types, but you don't need to actually alter the current search functionality. Batch import. So it's also very easy to add the functionality we need for the batch import. It's just a matter of also importing the item type and then just expanding it for only the relationships between the item types that are possible. Um, there's some more examples, like I said, in a document, but this is one of the main points is to reuse a lot of the current functionality, which also has the additional benefit that if in future releases or in next steps in this implementation, we would, for example, say we want to add hierarchical metadata if we do it for the items, then it's immediately available for all entity types. If we would, uh, for example, um, decide to make the input forms configurable in the UI, um, as DSpace Chris does, for example, it's immediately available for everything. Um, so in that sense, it's a little bit, it takes a bit from both DSpace Chris and from our CAPS proposal, um, but tries to minimize the effort um, as much as possible to make this achievable within the time frame of, for example, DSpace 7. Now, how would we configure a CRIS model with this? You have a very simple XML configuration. You just define the six relationships that you need, which comes down to an XML file of only 75 lines. Uh, it's included in that document that was linked or that you can get to from Tim's overview. Um, so it's very easy to write that. And what we would propose in this solution is to have the opportunity to automatically add configurations to DSpace. So let's say you're a user that just wants a simple IR use case. You don't want um, any of the Chris entities. You're not interested in that. It's just you know a, a repository to serve images from some image. Um, archive that you have and you don't really care about projects or whatever, then you don't configure the automatic um, Chris model or another model. You could even use another model that was specific for an image uh, repository, for example. Um, but if you're in, in the situation where you do want a Chris model and you do want all those um, uh, entity types basically in your repository, just turn on a configuration parameter at the build um, level, so a Maven build parameter, for example, that automatically pulls in or uses that configuration file to define your Chris relationships in the XML. And would, for example, automatically create collections for people, projects, and organizational units, and you attach input forms to those collections so that you have a collection where you can store your projects and that there is a metadata uh, profile associated with it that you have your input forms uh, ready for that. An automatic creation of certain search configuration, like the facets specific to those ob uh, entities that you're adding, people, projects, or units. Uh, an automatic creation of item display pages. Um, there's some information in a document again about how we do, how we would propose to do that for DSpace 7. Um, and by doing that, you kind of have Chris um, functionality supported out of the box. 
and other people who don't want it don't have it out of the box and we have the opportunity and that's even more important to add other data models as well and make DSpace more flexible in that regard. And then maybe the most important slide. So this is an estimate that we created to uh, be able to get to this kind of implementation. And if you sum up the values here, we're talking about 15 days of work for the generic model and 15 days to actually implement the Chris use case, more or less, I think it's 16, maybe more 17. But so this is all achievable within a time frame of less than two months if there is only one FTE available to do this work. So it's a very short time frame, a short implementation, and it is kept specifically this way so that we can expand on it later on and add some of the features that we've seen in the other proposals like our co metadata um, like type like type metadata for example and add them over time but still have something that would work immediately um, and where you could immediately add new entities and have a representation of the chris model and you can decide as, you're, as, as the user of your repository, how far you want to go in tailoring your different item views for the different types, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but it is a workable proposal that we can achieve on a relatively short time frame. So if there are any questions, feel free. I, I like your, your uh, approach. Um, to me, I like the, the implementation expert, uh, uh, pers perspective uh, of it. And also the idea of having, for instance, uh, uh, an author uh, sharing a, a collection, the same collection with an item. It can be possible within this model, I think. Um, but 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 I, I like it I like and I think uh, what you just said it it is open to add uh, other requirements like the hierarch hierarchical met metadata metadata um, it's not closed and reuses uh, uh, the the core space to to accomplish the the the, the result of having uh, entities in this space. I think it's a, a good approach, simpler, sim, much simpler, simply, simplest than simpler than, than ours. Yeah, and maybe that was one thing I forgot to highlight, which I think is also an, an important aspect of this proposal: is the learning curve for anyone who knows DSpace today is very low, and it's very simple to understand and to start working with this this model because it reuses almost all of the functionality that exists in DSpace, so anyone can very quickly start working with it. Yes. I just have one or two issues regarding the, for instance, DSpace Chris implemented some of, I don't know, I don't remember what they call him, let me see if I hear, see it. <laughs> First class entities. Uh, those entities have some specific behavior. Uh, I don't know at this point if the data model is the solution to, to have that specific behavior, but um, this could be a requirement or something like that. Yeah, I've been kind of puzzled by this whole discussion of behavior being in the data model. Uh, you know, behavior is in code. The data model just tells us what kind of thing this is so we know how to behave. Y yes, y you are correct. But, but if you need a couple of things uh, to help y doing that behavior, or accomplish that behavior in the data model, I don't know for now if the, the, this is the, the right solution. But like I said before, I don't know if the, the data model is the solution for supporting specific behavior. Uh, the space crews did that. I don't know, perhaps uh, Andrea has a, a, a other insight that I don't at this moment. It's true what Mark says. I mean, it, the implementation for a specific behavior for a specific entity might be slightly easier 
to accomplish if you have that entity as a hard-coded um, object in your um, implementation. But it's not that much more work to base it on um, uh, the, the type of item that you would be dealing with. So it's, it's, it's an extra step, yes, um, but it's not that much more complex and it gives you a lot more flexibility, basically. I mean, it's a, it's a little bit of a trade-off. Yeah, I, I agree that is absolutely a, a thing of balance, complexity, and uh, uh, flexibility. Our experience is uh, it's much more complex to add behavior to a generic entity. Uh, we say that after the experience with this space, Chris, where we have both approach in place. So please keep in mind that on the space, Chris, you have some fierce citizen, as uh, Paolo say, but we also have a dynamic entity that can be whatever you want. When we need to implement something that apply to the dynamic entity, it is much more complex than uh, what we need to implement just for author or for organization and, and so on. This is our experience on currently on this space, Chris. I don't want to force too much. It's just reporting what we have observed. Yeah, but it's it's definitely a useful point and, and should be looked into in detail. I was just wondering if you have like one concrete example of that that we could use for discussion. Uh, I can think about that. I don't have any immediately come on to my mind as a easy example to, to understand. Because it, it, I mean, even in this model, it's not unthinkable that we would add a first class entity, as you said, for example, person. It's not impossible, it's not unthinkable. And if we use one or two different examples, then we can in, in detail discuss what the implication would be for one or the other model, and then see what, you know, uh, it will help to to decide where the balance point in that trade-off would be. I, I will bring to the table one uh, taboo issue or subject that is being discussed uh, um, that can um, uh, help us think, thinking more on this. Um, if you if you have e persons or users and you want to relate that that users with um, authors for instance uh, how can this model respond to to that uh, need um, i think maybe tim wants to jump in here because this was one that was discussed um, in the entities working group chat i yes. think um, mark also brought it up um and and yeah tim do you want to take this or should i just um i i, I worry we're getting way too far down a rabbit hole if we go down this discussion. <laughs> um, I think there's several ways it could be achieved. And Mark and I, I think, actually mostly agree to some extent, just disagree about implementation details, which I don't know that is worth our time to dig into um, right now. Um, I'd much rather yeah. try and keep this initial discussion as sort of a question and answer about this model, because I want to make sure that the generic aspects of this model and how this looks makes sense right now. Um, if we have time at the end, I'd be glad to dig into this um, e-person versus person thing, but I just spend the next 15 minutes only on no, Sorry, team. Jump in with a general question about the, the, the model you just presented about the idea. Um, so what I really like is that it's really lean and simple. What I'm a little bit afraid of is that we end up with um, two kinds of entities. On one side, we have the entities that will then be somehow related to the item stuff we can't have, to the item entity we can't have. And then we have communities, collections, and bundles. And I'm a little bit afraid that we will be able to do a lot of things with the, with the entities that um, somehow comes from, from the item class we can't have, and that we won't be able to do the same things with the communities, collections, and bundles. So for example, when we introduced the metadata for all, we got a rich ability in the back end, but we are still missing the same abilities in the front end. So we cannot really use the metadata for all for the communities and collections currently because the front end does not support that. 
Um, and she again taking the item and ignoring the community collections. I'm a little bit afraid we will enter a similar situation in which we then would be able to do a lot of stuff with entities except communities, collections, and bundles. So what I'm asking myself is, Yes, I like the idea to reuse code we have in the item class, but cannot we move this code from the item level to the DSpace object level and follow your approach, but working on the DSpace object? Yes, Pascal, this is exactly my, uh, the same issue that I have with this proposal in some way, because, uh, I think that uh, this proposal is much more uh, uh, well structured on the on the point of uh, the project execution. So there is more. Uh, uh, this is just the first step. Uh, the proposal is a sequence of different step to to build uh, the full system uh, as progressive uh, improvements. Uh, there is a lot of reuse of existing code, but I think that the same reuse and most of the same reuse can be done also using TRCAP proposal, for instance. Yes. So, for uh, just to let you know, in the space seven, we already have reused some concept of the item to provide the metadata for the B stream. Mm -hmm. In the code that we have on the master, you are able to use input form to describe the metadata to apply to an item, but also to the B stream. Great. Just onto your input form. And you can uh, change the configuration to collect additional metadata. So it is very easy to expect to just be able to submit every time of uh, the space object. Uh, this can be easily extended. One point, in my opinion, is about uh, the example that uh, um, I think Polo do about uh, the link between user and author profile. Uh, yes, I don't want to go into detail, but please keep in mind that the detail will be the thing that will uh, get uh, 30 days just to discuss about the detail. We will spend a lot of time just to discuss about the detail much more than what we expect for the implementation. The implementation time that uh, I think uh, was presented in the last proposal is what happens if you have just one director that say, you need to implement this thing in this way, there is no discussion and we get the final result. But if we go on this route and we want to have a democratic process and we want to discuss, we will spend more than 30 days on each specific detail. This is my personal opinion. The thing is, if you want to link user and author, you can do that in every, uh, in every case, using whatever solution do you want. But if you want to enforce some rule at the database level, having a separate table, it will be much useful, much more easy and useful. And this same uh, assumption uh, is related to the difference between collection and item. I see a need to have a different object that is just a collection. Maybe we don't need a community and collection because community and collection have a clear um, scope in the digital libraries and in the digital object world in some way. When you talk about collection of digital object, you expect to have a specific role for preservation, for responsibility about the content, so collection in the digital library world means something very specific. And we cannot mix this collection concept with the idea of a department. Because if you, we think that we need to have a collection as a department where we want to put person, we have an issue here because in some case, the department is a collection. In other case, as you want to link the department or as the founder, of an item, it will become an item. So if we have ambiguities in the data model, I think that there is something broken. Also, bundle and bstream are very important for, and are related to the fact that we are talking about digital object and full text. For instance, we want to uh, be able to add additional technical metadata. We want to add uh, preservation features so that uh, 
uh, you can decide that uh, original content is stored in a very safe place and uh, thumbnail are uh, stored in, uh, in a bundle that is uh, associated with uh, an ephemeral storage. And if you lose it, you can just rebuild this stuff. So it is useful to have some concrete entity in the model. And I think that actually this space has the right entity just for digital libraries, but miss the entity for the context object. So I like the idea of RCAP, but also at my is very similar to, to start from to the space objects so that we have the metadata and we can build on top of that. I don't think that a person, an author profile need to stay in a collection because we don't need a collection to, to represent what? Entity types. So we are just replicate the same concept in two different places. There is a, an indication of a, a weakness of the data model, in my opinion. But, but uh, uh, sorry. sorry. I think that, that's a really good point. If we are looking on, on the authors, the items, and the collections, if we start from the item object, they always have to have an owning collection currently. If we are starting from these space object, we could imagine entities that don't have to be in any collection at all. And authors might be a good example for understand that. Well, they would still need to be in an entity that describes um, who can manage them and, and who has uh, uh, who can do what with these particular objects or items right even for person case and so for that reason um i think if, if you look at the details in the document one of the things that we were leaning more towards was that if you set up a collection for to manage persons um that that collection would be hidden it would not be shown in communities and collections tree it can be shown if we want to um, but it would typically not be shown because it doesn't have that meaning that Andrea was talking about. Um, but you do need to group them in some kind of context in order to have a workflow, in order to have a submission, in order to have um, authorization um, for who can, can edit these. So it does make sense to put them in a collection, but it does not necessarily make sense to put them in a collection as being a department or an organizational unit. But we do have resource policies to deal with this stuff. And uh, we have e-person groups. Uh, e-person groups, I would say, is something different. And we're getting into the discussion of the, the, yeah. the user versus person. Um, uh, but we do have resource policies. But yes, then you can't then you have to manage them on a person level, on an individual person level, and you can't do that on a group. Now, that being said, um, collection as it exists currently in DSpace might not be ideal uh, for this. And, and um, I think we need to have more iterations on this flexible data model over the next few versions of DSpace. So as I said in the beginning, I, I know that there are um, improvements needed or necessary, um, but we can discuss whether or not we want to add those in the initial proposal or whether we think it should be in next versions. Right, yeah, I think I'd, I'd like to get back to that core sort of difference between um, the RCAP proposal and the Atmire one here, because I think there is a lot of similarities and the questions folks are asking are very good ones, like should, should these entities be at the item level? Should they be at the DSpace object level? Um, I think those are all great questions, but the big core difference is in resourcing. Um, and the amount of time it would take to get it done. So the Atmire approach that I see right here is that, yes, things start at the item level. Um, yes, maybe that isn't the most logical thing going forward. Maybe eventually they should go to the DSpace object level and all these things should work off DSpace object. But this takes a staged approach where it relies on item right now so that we can rely on the things that item can do already. And then as we move those things that item can do already down to the DSpace object level, like input forms, um, other sorts of bulk metadata editing, all those to the DSpace object level, then yes, the model could move with it. Um, and entities could become DSpace objects instead of specifically items. But we're doing it in more of a staged approach uh, rather than trying to refactor the entire data model all at once. Um, but I think, there could be a way forward here that we start with the Atmire model and move towards the RCAP one. 
um, to some extent and find the best of both worlds here. I just want to make sure that we're realizing that we don't have unlimited resources. We also don't really have unlimited time here because we have people who want this basically today um, in order to meet needs of like open air version four um, that's coming out in terms of uh, European requirements. Um, and not just European requirements, but starting there. So I think there's a lot of key um, factors here that we need to be considering in this decision and how we can move this forward. Um, that's all I wanted to say with that. Yeah, and, uh, yeah but Tim, please keep in mind that uh, uh, the aircap proposal, in my opinion, is not so well presented as the last one in terms of split of work. Okay. Because we can go with the RCAP proposal, for instance, but we are not required to implement immediately metadata uh, type or hierarchy metadata or all the stuff. Mm -hmm. So we can start with the space object and we can decide that metadata type come later. So they are very similar. I don't, don't see this big difference in, uh, uh, in the effort for the first step. I totally, totally agree on that. Yes, yep. the, the second thing is uh, we need to be really honest on that. If you want to have all this functionality in place now, I don't think that both never or the solution work for you. If you want to have all the functionality that the user requests, you need to go with the space Chris because this functionality is implemented. I don't try to sell you the space crisis, just to be clear. But right. when yep. we go for this first step, this first step will be very far from what the user needs. Because they need to have the orgit synchronization, they need to have automatic pool of information, they need to have the, the right exposure of all the inform rich information of IPMH. There is a lot of detail. It's not a work of tier today. So Whatever option we go, we are just making a first step toward this implementation. But it's something that we, in the best case, will result like the introduction of metadata for all. Mm -hmm. We have introduced Thanks. metadata for all, is a big improvement, but nothing is changed in two different versions of the space. The functionality was the same. I think you just gave a few examples of the advantages of the uh, model that Levin just presented as well, because you're talking about uh, solutions to make the uh, Chris objects available over OAI. With the model where we are working with items, we can easily use the existing OAI functionality, which, which is already uh, built based on items, which can just be filtered to uh, use a different uh, context depending on whether you'd want to uh, download publications, authors or whatever using different crosswalks. And another example is we have the existing REST API where you can both uh, create new items and uh, retrieve items. So all of those APIs are already present uh, for items. So th those are things that are important reasons why we chose to work with items. Yeah, exactly, and and they're not perfect yet, right? So for in 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 these space, Chris, there is more functionality that is exactly tailored to those objects. But by with this proposal, we start with something flexible that has most of the functionality there, but not perfectly, and then iteratively we can perfect um, those things. And I think with any other uh, with with the, the two other proposals to get to a first initial working version, um, it would take more time and effort. Uh, maybe not in the case of DSpace Chris, but then DSpace Chris has the, the, the disadvantage that it's more written as an add-on. So this lays a little bit more the groundwork that then DSpace Chris can be built on top of. This is how I see, see the... the, the um, the data model evolving and um, I mean having those things evolve over time I think is better and okay yes it's it has a slight disadvantage that we you don't have a lot of specialized functionality from the start but you do have all the functionality 
hold the basic functionality from the start. I, th I think the lesson from metadata for all is that yes, build a you know a rather abstract and flexible you know a bottom layer, but then we have to follow through and actually build out the you know specific features you know layer features on top of it that people want. Right. Yeah, and I, I agree with that. I think we still will with metadata for all. I think the thing that's taken us some time is that we've had to solve this user interface thing uh, problem, which we all are aware of in terms of two user interfaces and all that. Um, but yeah, I guess one other thing I would point out here um, that I actually, I, I admit, I when I the first time I saw this um, on <laughs> this week, basically, or actually late last week when Levin uh, threw it my way, um, I also had these same questions about whether things belong at the item level and the DSpace object level that folks are expressing here, which seems to be one of the key things here. Um, and the more I've thought about that throughout the week, I'm actually not certain that we want um, all entities to be DSpace objects. Um, and that's just me. Um, primarily because of the, the all of the research and stuff that's gone into the Portland Common Data Model, which I'm not sure how many people are aware of that, but they do specifically split, split out, as Levens noted, collections from objects, and that collections are a very specific um, type of thing to group things. It's not an entity. It's something that actually is there to, to allow us to build hierarchies of entities um, instead of being an entity in itself. Um, and the more I've been thinking through this process, I'm actually not convinced that building all this down to the DSpace object layer is the right decision. It may be in the long term, but in the short term, I, it, it brings me back to whether or not taking a first step into the entity realm is worth doing at a basic level um, and then starting to see what do we learn from that and how can we improve on that and do a next iterative step. And if that next iterative step is moving it down to the DSpace object, great. If the next iterative step is uh, these need to stay at items, but we need to make items more of a, uh, more enhanced in some way to actually al allow us to, to build these in more configurably, then that's another way we could go. Um, I'm realizing we're out of time here. I just wanted to kind of get in those notes that, um, that in my mind, I'm not sure that, um, that, uh, that either solution is exactly right, but I think we need to take that first step and start to learn from it and get, get into this a little bit more. Should we continue this discussion in the, uh, next week or something like that? It is possible for everybody? I am not available on Friday next week myself, but I could do it a different day. I think it's it's important, Tim, that we do make some kind of conclusion that we can discuss further in um, in the steering committee because they asked for some advice. Um, I also wanted to say uh, that I apologize for bringing this proposal to the table relatively late in the process, um, but it was mostly because we saw similarities between the two other proposals and we were hoping to see more flexibility. So that's why um, we did decide to, to bring this up uh, so late. So apologies for that. But Tim, I think we do need to have some kind of... Um, I agree. Yeah, I agree. I'm just noting we're out of time here at this point in time. So I don't know if we want to schedule another meeting or if we want to do some more discussion here for the next half an hour, if folks can stick around. For me, and I assume the same counts for Andrea, um, it would be easier to run over with 10 minutes than to find a new time to meet. Okay. Um, I'm not sure if we, if we can really bring it to a point where we are all clear on it in 10 minutes. I think we need more time for this, and this is a crucial point of this working group, this decision. So while I understand it's hard to find another, another date, I'm, I'm afraid 10 minutes won't be enough. Yeah, probably we need both solution, I think, again. So we can uh, use 10 minutes to make the final comment of the proposal and keep some time to, to think about that and meet again to discuss. I like both proposals. I think both have pros and cons. And what I would love to see is a merge of both proposals. So. For example, I like the idea of the second proposal to start from the DSpace object. I like the idea of the third proposal to reuse code we have for the items. But I think we can 
easily put a lot of code we have for the items currently to the object level. I think the, the API, it would be possible to, to move a lot of code from the item service to the to this object service, for example, to achieve that. So um, if we have only some minutes left, um, I would love to, to have a little bit of time uh, to discuss the idea of merging both proposals. Thank you for that. Um, anybody else have comments? I would like just to draft some uh, final comment, not exactly in a technical way. Uh, I think these both solutions um, are, are, have some aspects in mind at the beginning. The recap is more in the concept of what the space entities or the space objects uh, should be or should um, integrate themselves. Uh, the the Levan approach is more on a, on a practical and implementation uh, and a feasible uh, aspect of what can we do with existing space functionalities and, uh, um, and codes to be able to quickly do something for that. Uh, with the comments we have already heard here, I think we should try to focus on some kind of mix of these two proposals. Uh, but for me, the one very important aspect is that we need as soon as possible to have a the space uh, instance that allows people all over the world to input identifiers in their repository. So I think we, we should try to focus on this uh, proposal of Levin regarding a, a very uh, feasible roadmap of features and functionalities to be able to have one version of the Space 7 with the possibility to introduce at least basic functionalities to be able to, to have um, some kind of entities uh, represented in some way into the space and then go further to uh, check from the errors we, we will have regarding this first implementation and continue to improve uh, because I think we already know where we want to go um, but I think also we need to start going uh, right now and think regarding development. I have, Thanks, a, Jose. Go I ahead, have a question on exactly what you would like to merge for the two proposals. It, it sounded a bit as if you were trying to merge the, the, uh, the non-configurable part of having the rigid entities as DSpace objects, which in, which would be defeating the whole purpose of this proposal a bit. So I, I, what, what exactly would you want to merge in from the second proposal, just to make this clearer? I think, I think uh, I don't uh, speak for others, but uh, I think it is the, uh, the space object has uh, the same behavior as the, 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 the item or, something like that i think so, so it's the part about adding the bundles to the dspace object so it can also be reused for collections would that be the and part the, that would... and the, the api and something like that i'm not sure if like... that's correct pascal did you want to clarify yeah so what i would like to see if you would ask me how how much could look like i think we should start from the DSpace object. We should reuse as much code as possible that we currently have on the item level, on the DSpace object level, so that we get things like uh, metadata for all, also for the community's collections, for example, that the community's collections don't feel like being a, set, a second class entity compared to other, other entities. So mm -hmm. I would, would prefer to, from the first approach, uh, from the second approach, I would, would like to take the idea to start from the DSpace object level. From the third approach, I would like to, to start uh, to, to use the idea to reuse as much code we currently have in the item level. Uh, and, but of course, we would have to push it up to the DSpace object level. And I think still, 
that would be much easier to re than to rewrite all the code. I think it's, it's possible to, to, to pull this code out of the item level and to push it to the DSpace object level. But so features such as the submission UI for collections, for instance, that's and configurable fields for the collection, that's what you're referring to. I wouldn't call it a submission process, but having an editor that allows me to be to, to, to configure which fields it shows, yes, I would love to see that for communities and collections so that I can really use metadata for all in communities and collections. Okay, I think that's a good suggestion. I don't know whether it's, uh, it should be part of the, the Chris discussion or not, uh, but maybe Tim, you can comment on that. Yeah, I think uh, it's not part of the Chris discussion, but it's part of the discussion about entities, because for me, community collections are also entities as the others. And again, I don't want to have to explain somebody why we have entities that maybe even dynamically entities they can add, but why our communities and collections totally behave different than all other entities. So that's why so Pascal, important. can I, can I ask you a quick question to make sure I'm clear, clear on yes. this? So you're asking Please. for essentially you want the admire option, but instead of entities being on items, you just want entities on DSpace object. Other than that, it's the admire option. Is that correct? Yes. Plus the, the director chance? metadata. Okay, so, okay, so hierarchical metadata, hierarchical I'm going to set aside for a moment. Okay, yeah. so that's the only other thing you're interested in is hierarchical metadata, and then instead of DSpace item, you want it on DSpace object. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, that that's clear what, what you're asking. So it's not less, less redoing both proposals and more thinking about whether or not proposal number three could be on DSpace object um, specifically, and then considering yeah. hierarchical metadata. Yeah. But I can't. I, I cannot agree with that vision that we have. Uh, for instance, uh, people at the same level as collections, or yeah, or I don't. The challenge with D space moving everything to D space object is then you have to deal with e person and group, and some other things that are D space objects. Um, bundles in the same way. I, I don't see them as entities. Uh, I see uh, entity, a, a person, organization. Uh, I don't see uh, collection as an entity. I can handle it like a, an entity, but I don't see. As so, a, for yeah. me, entity is uh, the, the content. So, so I'm not, yeah, to clarify, I'm not against this idea. I think that if somebody wants to run with that and start to dig into that, I'm totally for an, analyzing that, but I do think there will be some challenges for other types of DSpace objects. I like the idea for communities and collections. I agree with you, Pascal. Communities and collections should end up at the same sort of level that you can kind of tweak their uh, input forms and things of that nature in the same way that you can with items. But I think it's the other types of DSpace objects that might be a challenge to just move all this code in bulk um, to one from one layer I'm, to another. I'm afraid that we are putting too much time pressure on this. I think this is really crucial for DSpace. The, the, the data models is, is really the core part of it. And I agree. Just going forward because we are missing time is, is not nothing I like really here. I think we need the time to dig into this together. I cannot do it on my own. I don't, sorry, that's too much for me on my own, currently. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I understand. The time pressure is um, essentially from DSpace users. I will let you know. Um, we have plenty of major DSpace users that want to see DSpace be able to manage these sort of objects. Um, so there is a risk, and that's what steering is pushing us for, essentially. There is a risk that if we do not move with something that even meets part of the needs that we could potentially start to lose um, users who want these things out of DSpace. Um, so that's kind of why the time crunch is there. Um, yes, Tim, sorry. Please go ahead. Let me to say just one thing. Uh, I agree with you, the space user want to have a rich system. Yep. But uh, this is why we propose the space Chris to solve most of the uh, issue. I will be happy to support and work with the community to, to get a better solution on the long term where the space Chris can go back and merge with a better solution. But now we don't need to get the risk to take a short uh, solution to, to get something to show fastly. It's not a perfect solution, 
uh, because if we don't, we just accept something that is not a perfect solution in the wrong line, we have also already space crystals that have a lot of value. So if we decide to don't go for the space crystals, we need to build the thing in the right way. This is my point. I want to help and work with the community to build the thing in the better way possible. This doesn't mean that we need to wait 10 years before to have the worst solution. We go, can go for step. But the first step needs to be the right one. I cannot accept to, to start with uh, just something that uh, makes some user happy and we need to go back. Also with the Space 7, we get a lot of risk because we have a lot of expectation. We are late with the release uh, on the user uh, expectation. And if we go with a new release and we need to go back because we changed some idea, our mind uh, later, it will be a risk. Move to the space seven, it will be a difficult task for the community because we change a lot of things. Right. So we cannot put something that we are not sure that is in the direction that we want to get. We cannot make experiments with the space seven. This is my point. And I yes. think I'm really afraid to say that, but uh, I miss one important thing about both proposal that I think that we need to find a solution to better manage a relation. I will add some notes to discuss that because it's a difficult topic, but essentially both solution only manage relation between object in, managed internally in the system. The reality is that for the same entity, in some case you have the entity internal in the system, in other case you have external entity. And we need to create a model that is flexible and out to allow you to link an external author or an author that you have internally as a profile. This is something that uh, is possible in this space, Chris, because we have two different data models that coexist. The, the space data model that is very open, so you can link internal team or external team, and the Chris part that is uh, all internally managed. Because if you have an internal author, you are you can probably manage the affiliation and all the stuff related to your internal author. If you manage external co-author, it is much more difficult. And this is the reality and we need to have an idea, a plan about how to manage this, this complexity. So, but this is a very complex topic and I know that I was not clear, so I, I will add a comment about that. Okay. Thank you, Andrea. And I, I will note on the DSpace 7 front and, and the timeline thing, one of the other things that has come up in steering is that there are resources available for this work, provided that we do it soon um, in DSpace 7. So I've, there's been several institutions that have stepped forward and said that, you know, if we can do this as part of DSpace 7 and make a small step in the right, in, the, in a direction that helps us store this, this sort of data, more entities, more objects, um, in DSpace 7, then they will provide resources to do that. If we wait until DSpace 8, then that's where there is some risk there that some folks may not even upgrade to DSpace 7. Um, if we can convince them to go to something like DSpace Chris, yes, I'd be all for that if that's uh, going to meet their needs. I'm not convinced that that will meet all of these institutions' needs that we've been talking to. Um, so I just want to try and lay out all the risks here. There is a lot of Back and forth, um, I'm not really clear in my head which way is the best solution here and how best to bring this back to steering right now. Um, there are a lot of, go ahead, there Pascal. Are a lot of information missing actually for this discussion. So, with all this time pressure, for example, I understand why Andrea proposes D Space Chris. Um, if we have the time, I think, okay, we could, could take a look on how to design it. But then you just said that D Space Chris may even not solve this because the users we are speaking about have other things they need. So for me, yes. currently, I cannot make this discussion because I'm just missing the information. Okay. Yeah, and I understand your point about the time pressure and wanting to do things properly. Um, but yeah, I mean, that, that's an ideal world where you have enough time to do what you need to do. Um, and we have to take the time pressure into consideration, I think. Um, DSpace Chris offers um, more functionality on a short term, but also requires a rework to the Angular UI. So I'm not 
Sure. I mean, of course, Andrea can comment on this, but I'm not sure that that would take a lot less time um, than anything else. And then secondly, I'm currently not convinced that what we're proposing is not a good first step in the right direction. Um, I'm sure, I'm, I, I know that it needs to be improved. Um, I'm sure that there are some improvements uh, possible even to the way that the DSpace object relates to collection and uh, items, etc. cetera. Um, moving everything up to the DSpace object level, I'm not sure that that's the right solution, but creating a layer in between or whatever, those are definitely good things um, and, and can happen over the longer term. But being able to make relationships between items, I don't think is a functionality that is a step in the wrong direction. It will not give us everything that we need out of a Chris solution or another uh, data model uh, immediately, but I'm not convinced that it's not a step in the right direction. How much time do we have? Ideally, we want to have this in place together with DSpace 7 or to have yeah. one step in the right direction together with DSpace 7. I mean, for us, that was a very important starting point to propose something. And I, I agree, it's, it's not going to have all the features that DSpace Chris has, but as Andrea says, DSpace Chris can still exist alongside of DSpace for one more release. And Andrea also says, and we agree with that, that DSpace 7 needs to come out as soon as possible. And then we can improve on this in DSpace 8 and maybe have that as the time where we can, where, you know, uh, for science can also build the DSpace Chris on in DSpace rather than um, as a complete fork of, of DSpace or a fork of DSpace. Um, so my main question here is, is being able to make relationships between items a step in the wrong direction or is it a step in a good direction or not that can be improved on later? Yeah, my personal feeling is that it's a step in the right direction, which is why I'd like to see us move forward with something that at least goes in the right direction and we can improve upon it incrementally. Um, and to answer Pascal's question, we, we essentially have about a year, maybe less than a year. Uh, people want to see DSpace 7 out um, either by the end of 2018 or early 2019. Um, and ideally, it has some ability to manage extra entities. Um, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, 100% um, all there in terms of everything DSpace Chris does. But it should be a step in the right direction to be able to manage these relationships between objects, manage different types of objects. Um, ideally manage objects that are non, not, not even Chris specific. Um, and um, that's kind of where, where things have, are sit, sit right now. And it should be clear to people that whatever is delivered can be further built on if we didn't do everything that everybody wished for. Correct. Yeah, and ideally, uh, in fact, what we'd be building the groundwork for is different flavors of DSpace, which uh, different groups have talked about for many years. So there's not even just a DSpace Chris sort of flavor, but other sort of flavors where you could manage entities more related to images or more related to video content or more related to data sets. And you could actually manage the relationships between items as data sets. Um, you know, different sorts of flavors of DSpace allowing you to kind of customize DSpace in different ways that you currently cannot. Um, and that's kind of where this first stage could really help build the groundwork for that, where in the future releases, we could have those different flavors. Um, but we just need to make that sort of first step. Uh, Andrea, I don't know if you could comment on this because I would like to hear your opinion about this. Yes, my only warning is about uh, the strong use of item because I, I think that uh, the point that we can use a lot of things for item and not for the space object is uh, honestly is weak. It, it is really for the space six. If you need to do this stuff on the space six, you are right. You have a lot of features for the for item that are not available for the space object. But if we are talking about the space seven, 
whole the thing that already exists for item also exists for the other object. And uh, the only evidence that we have about that is that the submission, you can use the input form for the bestream and for the item because it is based on the metadata for all a concept. So whatever we implement in this space seven, in my opinion, need to respect metadata for all because we already have. So, so let me let me poke on that a bit here, uh, really quick. So, if if your only disagreement here is between uh, whether it's at the item or the object level, are you essentially saying, Andrea, that you agree with this option three that Atmire has proposed, but you would just propose that we analyze whether we could move this down to the DSpace object layer? Yes, I think that if we move to option three to the DSpace object level, I don't see too much difference with the RCAP proposal. Just to be honest, the difference is that we have a relation table instead of to use the bundle. Mm -hmm. But this right. is a, an implementation detail, in my opinion, is not uh, the important thing. Because I guess my. So uh, if we make this change, if in the space seven, we will be able to create more relation between the internal objects, it is an improvement. Right. In any case, uh, it's good to have. I don't think that it is uh, an out to say that uh, you support external entity and it's a CRIS system. It's allow you to do all the things that the user want to do. But it is an improvement. So if we have other stuff that want to do that, other resource that we love uh, to have that in the space server, it can be done. Mm -hmm. So I, I guess that even it is not in the wrong direction. It's just right. a new functionality. But we are talking about slightly different things. And I want to be sure that we understand that. What was your, I don't understand what your last point is there with the, we were talking about different things, which things are different? The, the goal that uh, our users have and uh, what we will provide in this space server. They are very far. So if we want to have the, or a strong working integration, this is, this help to do something better, but is not the ORCID integration implementation. And the ORCID integration implementation will require itself maybe 30 days. Yeah, and no, no, I don't think that we are proposing that, but it is that this lays one step in the groundwork to be able to move in that direction. Right. Yes, I, I agree. So, Yes. Again, if we do that in the right way, that for me mean we need to to say more onto the space object level. We need to instead to do think at the item level and move down later. We immediately do the new thing directly for metadata for all. As we are doing in in the space seven, there is no need to to force us to focus on the item we can uh, talk about metadata for all. And we can do that also for that. I understand that, well, with metadata for all, we can do uh, the exact same things about metadata for any DSpace object. That's, that's the, the goal why the metadata for all was contributed in the first place. But metadata for all is not everything uh, that's necessary for this model. And there are many other things that are present in items that are going to be very complicated or not realistic to apply to all these place objects, such as, uh, for instance, a submission workflow, a submission steps, workflow steps, those things are not going to apply to any DSpace object. Uh, batch imports, those may be relevant for collections, but it's going to be complicated to uh, apply that to all these space objects. Uh, there are many parts that are specific that, that are that are specific to item that are hard to translate to these space object and don't necessarily make any sense on that level. So yeah, I agree with all. I, it's good to hear this discussion. I think it's good to understand here too that um, it, there's just obviously a strong disagreement between whether this stuff um, should be at the item level or the object level. Um, I guess my question is, is that the only layer of disagreement here? Um, is everyone on this call okay with option three, providing that we figure out that disagreement point? 
We we are okay with uh, option three. Okay. Yes. Okay. Because I'm just trying to figure out where the disagreement sits. Pascal? Yes. But Would you be I okay? I can't say anything about the time plan. We have to have some time to figure that out. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We need time to figure out the item versus D space object question. But if that's the only question, I'm just trying to make sure that's the only question. Yes. yes. Andrea? Yes. Uh, yes. I said, okay. I just. Additional feature that we can add. It's not okay. all we need. Yeah, yeah, I understand that it won't solve everything, but I, I'm just trying to clear, clarify so that when we bring this back to steering, that everybody on this call feels that option three looks very promising. So this is what I'm going to say, essentially. I want to make yeah. sure that I have it right. Option Maybe three looks I promising. Just, just say in a different way. Okay. My worry is uh, I don't want to abuse of this uh, new feature to do something that uh, should be done in a different way. So this new feature adds some value, solves some issue. I don't want to try to abuse of such features to say that we can solve everything. Because if we need to some, something very specific, we can discuss about a better strategy to solve uh, the specific feature. Yeah, I, I agree with that conceptually. I just don't have a good way to respond to that because it's not very tangible. Yes, absolutely. It's just a yeah. warning for all of us. So yep. don't try to implement whatever we want just quickly. Right. This is a good functionality that we want to add. It's good to have. We agree yes. that we want to go in this direction. But if we need to build something on top of it, we need to discuss if we want to use it as it is or we want to extend again. And so we don't need to go yes. quickly on all the decision. I agree. Yeah, I agree with that completely. Let's just trying to make a first step here and then we don't need to move as quickly for every single uh, feature necessarily or every single um, next step. But, but what I was getting to here is I want to make sure everybody agrees with this statement that I'm going to tell steering is I'm going to say that uh, this working group feels that option three looks very promising. However, there is a lot of question around whether or not this is implemented at the DSpace item versus DSpace object level. Um, and so there needs to be some implementation sort of discussion and analysis done there in terms of how we would implement um, option three. Is that correct? I guess, I guess, I guess respond yeah. no if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> you agree too. Okay. Okay, so I, I think that's, to me, that seems like a good enough um, decision for today. I don't know that we need to continue this meeting any further. I can bring that back and say that option three, um, we all agree that is promising, but we do need to dig in more on the implementation details. Um, and perhaps even Atmire can start to dig in slightly on, on that, uh, Ben or Levin, if you feel that your team has any time to kind of uh, do an initial analysis of what it would take to move this to the DSpace object level that others can then start to respond to and comment on. Yeah, sure. No problem. Okay. Well, then I think we're done. Unless there's anything else that uh, Paulo, is there anything else you wanted to say on your? No, own? no, no, no. no. Uh, I, I don't. I don't know if we need to schedule another meeting, or we can. I can doodle it. Um, I think doodling it should be okay. I, I think the basic concept is we need a direction to start with, and it sounds like to me that we now have a direction to start okay. with. We're looking yeah. more closely at option three, and now we just need to start to flesh out the proposal, make it more detailed, um, understand exactly how we would implement this, especially looking at that DSpace object versus DSpace item. Okay. So, so, so I think we're good. Um, I'd say doodle it for the next meeting. Um, I'll bring this back to steering. And um, our next meeting for this group probably does not even need to be before the next steering meeting, which is in early April. We could probably meet after that. Okay. So that steering okay. has a chance to respond. Okay. But if possible, it would be nice to meet before early April. So you would like to meet again before early April? I, I think we need to have some path forward and if it's possible to meet before early April that would be great if it's not possible then fine as well but I mean I wouldn't assume from the start that it's not possible but so I'm okay yeah yeah I mean, I'm available that first week in April myself and I'm available most of next week except for Friday 
um, but we could doodle it and try and find a meeting here in the next two weeks. Oh, could any of that be done on Slack? Possibly. I think we'd need a proposal to respond to. That might be a, at, if Atmeyer or somebody can look at the initial analysis that we could start to respond to, then maybe we could do some of the commentary in Slack or in a new proposal document. But we still probably need to meet to make sure we're all on the same page. Well, yeah, we could we could get to the point that we know what we need to discuss in real time. Right. So do, does that make sense then, um, Paulo? Would you be willing to go ahead and set up a doodle for the next for a meeting in the next couple of weeks here? Okay. Um, and in the meantime, um, uh, Levin and Ben, if you two could bring this back and see if you could start some analysis on. D space object versus D space item <coughs> start to respond to even before that next meeting. Yep, no problem. Okay, sounds good. Well, thank you all very much. This has been a, a great discussion. I know it's gotten a little bit heated and gone way over time, but I appreciate all of your time um, and uh, getting into this detail. Um, and I look forward to, to further discussions on this. Thanks. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, team. Thank you all. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.